we gon' drop this one like this, y'all. I know you didn't see it coming. Here we, here we, here check we go. it, check it. Sunday morning, I have something to look forward to. I'm getting excited cause I know the thing is gonna be right. People see me, they don't understand the fire in me. I just tell them, come join me at Delta Bay COC. We come together where believing is belonging. The love of Christ is something we'll continue sharing. We come together where believing is belonging. Upon His word is where we will continue standing. I can lift my hand. John chapter 12, verses number 4. If you have it, say amen. amen. If not, say wait. The Bible reads from the New International Version, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. He says, why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As the treasurer, the keeper of the money bag, he used it to help himself to what was put into it. Oh, my Lord. Embezzlement in the church. We got to pray sometime. And then verse 7, Jesus responded because it's in red. He says, leave her alone. Everybody say, leave her alone. Jesus replied, it was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but uh, you will not always have me. So meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there, and not only because of him, but also they came to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And so the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the preacher is going to talk about, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Amen. You may be seated. I've been paroled too long. I like my freedom. I'm not going back. I know it's cheaper to keep it, but I'm not. You can take the money. My, my peace of mind is priceless. Live on the roof with that man no more. I'm not going back. Jesus in John, the 12th chapter, we understand is in now the shadow of the cross. He is a week away from Calvary, and he's preparing to become the sacrificial lamb for all of humanity. And on his way to the triumphal entry into Jerusalem when where he would come in riding on a donkey. Chapter 12 states that Jesus stopped in the small town of Bethany, which is located a few miles outside of the holy city of Jerusalem, a suburb of that particular city. And there we read where Jesus, with about just a week to live, decided to spend time with his friends. The Bible says he accepted an invitation of food, fellowship, and fun to the home of Simon the leper. And in that particular house, hosting were three of Jesus' closest friends, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, the three siblings. In the previous chapter, what we read is we see Jesus in John the 11th chapter raising Lazarus from the dead. And the minute he rose Lazarus from the dead and told him to come forth, this made Jesus at that time public enemy number one. And so at that time, the religious leaders plotted to take the life of Jesus. It was at that time that Jesus had never been so revered and reviled at the same time. And so at the height of his recognition, it was religion that sought to remove him. And religion will do the same today. Religion will always seek to remove anyone who threatens its rituals and routines. And so Jesus 
At this time, he took time to fellowship with his close friends. And in this house, we know, were Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. Three individuals that were his friends, but were all serving Jesus in three different kind of unique ways. First, we had Martha. Martha, the Bible says, was still serving as she was in Luke, the 10th chapter. She demonstrated her service to the Lord by simply serving. And some of you may ask the question, well, why is that special? Well, if you have a special event and you realize that Jesus Christ is the guest of honor, you don't want just anybody serving. You want somebody special that is called to do that serving. I'm here to let you know that I've been in the church all my life. And there are some sisters that just need to stay out of the kitchen. Am I right? I'm just trying to be nice here. They just need to stay out of the kitchen. Because uh, you don't want just anybody uh, fixing your plate. And you don't want just anybody making your potato salad. Uh, uh, you just can't have anybody seasoning uh, the meat. Uh, and you can't have uh, anybody uh, just pouring the drinks. You just need to have uh, some special people uh, that... That, that pay attention to the small things and the details in life. Uh, Martha was uh, specialized uh, in serving other people. It was Martha that knew how to greet. And there's some individuals in life that just know how to greet folk. Uh, when they come over to the house, uh, they know how to put around the, the, the right playlists and play the right kind of uh, Luther Vandross and Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye, and they just have all the nice hits going. Some people just know how to do that, and some people you put uh, in control of that, knowing church folk are coming over, and they put in Luke Skywalker and all this foolishness. Uh, you can't have just anybody over the playlist. Amen, amen somebody. It was Martha that was specialized in, in, in giving and serving uh, somebody. It was Martha that knew how to mix the punch bowl. Uh, she knew how to put a, the, the right amount of seven up and and uh, come on now, and pineapple juice. Uh, the, you, you know what I'm talking about, Sister Washington, that the kind of building punch that had everybody coming back for more and more. Am I right? And I'm here to let you know this morning that the church today need more Marthas. You see, it's, Marthas probably make up 20% of this congregation. And they do 80% of the work. We need more servants in the church. And you see, she understood that her gift was serving. And that's what she did. She, 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 she approached God through service and through work. There's nothing wrong with work. While you had Martha there, you also had Mary. Mary did not serve the Lord through her work. You didn't want Mary around your food. Say amen, somebody. Mary is the type of sister you just say, just bring the paper plates and cups. <laughs> Everybody got somebody in that family, just handle that part. Amen, somebody. But Mary, her gift was, was not work, but it was worship. There's some folk that are simply in tune with the footsteps of Jesus. Uh, they help others around them to understand who's in the presence and they help other people to understand that they're in the midst of an awesome God and he deserves to be glorified and magnified. Uh, it's people like Mary that help us to understand his true worth. And, and so sometimes we, we take them for granted, but it is the actions of a Mary that it remind us exactly who is in our midst. We need more Marys because Marys are just simply into you ever meet somebody that's just a straight up holy roller. They answer the phone, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. They just holy. That's Mary. She's the holy roller. She just in church 24-7. Am I right about it? Everything. If it's the Lord's will, everything, right? That was Mary. You need people like that, too. Then finally, you had Lazarus, our good friend Lazarus. So you had Martha, her gift was work. Mary's was, was to worship. But Lazarus, his gift was to witness. 
some folk have really in here have experienced the power of God on your life. And you've experienced God. And just like Lazarus, God has called you out of some dark places. And so, like Lazarus, you just got to testify. Now, what makes Lazarus an interesting witness is Lazarus on the pages of inspiration is not recorded saying one word, but he's an effective witness. He's just in the house. His presence in and of itself is a testimony. And some of us are here today. We've been through hell and high waters. Uh, some of us have experienced bankruptcy and divorce, uh, been homeless and been in prison. But just being here today says everything. You ain't got to say a word. I'm just alive. I'm a rape survivor. I'm alive. I am here today and I ain't got to say a word. I'm just here in the house. Thank you, Jesus. He just sitting there posted. And so now Lazarus is here and if Lazarus had still been in the grave, the dinner would have been a little different. It would have been sad. It would have been somber. Instead, it was a feast and a celebration. And so Lazarus represents the miracle that God has done for us in our lives. And Lazarus is there sitting at the table. I believe it was David that says, and he prepares a table for me in the presence of all of my enemies. And there's Lazarus. He's sitting at the table. He doesn't have his grave clothes on, does he? In other words, Lazarus doesn't look like what he's been through. Oh, man, I'm up. You see, when you're in the house of God, don't look like what you've been through. Am I right about it? Don't look like you've been sad, depressed, and crying all day. You go ahead and get your nails and your hair did. Am I right about it? Get your toes did. Get your French tips. Am I right about it? Um, yeah, get you a touch-up in the back, huh? Don't let your ex know that you've been crying all night. Don't look like what you've been through. Am I right? Get your dress off, lay away, uh, and sit at the table with Jesus like he's delivered you from something. Am I right? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't look like what I've been through. You don't look like cancer. You don't look like prison. Uh, you don't look like divorce and bankruptcy. Uh, you don't look like addiction. Am I right? You don't look like it in your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, looking at me, you'll never know. Mm, you would never know. You would never know. You would never know. I, I, I used to be a pimp. You would never know. I ain't going to snitch on myself. I was out there pimping. Pimping ain't easy. I'm just pastoring now. I had it like that. I'm just doing it for the Lord. You never know. I don't look like what I've been through. All right, let's, let's get back to the text. Now, remember it was back in the 11th chapter that he rose Lazarus from the dead. He answered the prayers of Mary and Martha. He made a way out of no way. He renewed hope in them, brought back their brother. That was in chapter 11. That is the last chapter. And if God has done something for you, and if he's made a way out of no way, then you just can't sit there. You got to testify. You see, in this chapter in your life, now, see, last chapter he did something for you. But in this chapter, it's time to reciprocate. We don't mind talking about what the God has done for us, but when it's time for us to do something for him, we get quiet. I'm a, it's all in the text. I'm going to show you in a second. It's all in the text. See, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. Am I right? And so if you love Jesus, then you have to give the very best. So we know the story. Mary comes. She takes this alabaster jar, and she breaks it open, and she pours the perfume on the feet of Jesus. She takes and unbinds her hair. Now remember, we talked about it last week, this was not normally done. A woman did not unbind her hair publicly. Only prostitutes walked around with their hair down. 
But she decided, she says, I'm going to take this weave down and I'm going to have my stuff all the way down here and I'm going to wipe this man feet with my extensions. And as she, <laughs> we got to make it applicable. And she hooking him up. Am I right? And do you not know sometimes you got to break tradition in order to engage God? In order to engage God, you're going to have to offend some folk, especially religious folk. Because they like, oh, I know she didn't do all that. She's doing too much. And the Bible says the fragrance filled the house and the air. And, 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 and so now everybody in, in the house smells the fragrance. And now everybody is affected by the actions of one. All it takes is one person in here that really loves God. And your actions will affect all of us. How is your devotion, the devotion of your life, affecting others around you? Can they see and smell the devotion of your life and say, that must be a child of God? Mm, mm, mm. And you can do it. See, Mary did not say a word. You can do it without announcing it, without broadcasting to everybody that you're a child of God, without posting it. Amen, Facebook preachers. I ain't going to get on the Facebook. Am I right? Do others sense your commitment to God just by simply being in your presence? She didn't say a word. She just worshiped. And the scent in the air put everybody on to her service. There's certain smells that just bring you back. They take you back to a place. The smell of sausage and bacon and eggs and ham and toast. Come on now. That's, that's just when you used to go over grandma's house and she just, she get up at four in the morning and just, that smell just woke you up and it took you, it takes you back to a place. I, I'm talking about where, you know, you used to go ahead and catch the bacon and slaughter it. I'm talking about them days. There's certain smells that just take you back. Certain smells that I, oh man, there's certain colognes that when you, you know, you'd be like, mm, that's my daddy. It's my uncle. He drunk. You know, because they always had that certain, that certain cologne, right? There's certain, certain things, and, and, and they may bring back bad memories. I can't, the smell of bananas take me there. What do bananas make us think of, Freddie? Laguna Honda Convalescent. He know. Convale we try, I can't eat bananas to this day. Because I think of the convalescent home. And they're good for you, too. I just can't associate the smell with the convalescent home. You remember that, Freddie? You was, we was all there, Freddie. We was all there at that age. We got to get back to that. Am I right? But this scent was pleasant. It was a pleasant smell. And so Mary anoints Jesus before his burial. Now, we will later read that she is supposed to save it for his burial, but she does it beforehand. Why? Because now when you smell the perfume, you don't think of death. You think of life. And it is the fragrance of worship to let us and remind us to let us know that we don't serve a God who is dead, but a God who is alive. Now watch this. Look at verses 4. We're going to go right through this and we'll let you go. Look at verses number 4. But one of his disciples. But one of his disciples. Judas Iscariot. Judas said what? Who was later to betray him. Object. So now, one of his disciples, Judas, was at the party. And he objected to the sacrifice. He was offended by true worship. He said, uh-uh. And some folk think the more offended they are, the more spiritual they are. I'm offended. Judas believed that 
the perfume that was poured on the feet of Jesus was wasted. He did not believe that Jesus was worth it, but that the perfume was wasted. When somebody used to get high, we used to say that person got wasted. Y'all remember them? Y'all don't, we don't say that no more, right? You got wasted. And so essentially what Judas was saying to Mary is that you must have been on something to pour out that entire bottle. You must have been smoking something to do all of that. You, you, you wasted, wasted. Now, when you hear comments from the peanut gallery, you always got to look and see who is talking. Don't just listen to the message. Listen to the source. Who is talking? It's Judas. Somebody always has something to say. Somebody always, now, when you look at the person that has something to say that always, because they're looking at you right now and telling you, you wasting your time going to that church. I'm going to go to heaven sitting right here on this couch because God is right here in my heart. Joe Osteen is right here on the screen. You wasting, it don't take all that. Look at who's talking. Same person and wasted 20 years smoking weed. Wasted years in a nowhere marriage, and they got a nerve to talk about you. They can see everybody's problem, but they own. Look who's talking. Am I right? But it's crazy how two people can walk out of the same house, smell the exact same fragrance. One person smells the aroma. Whew, that smells good. But another person, mm, they smell a stench. Same house, same fragrance, different perceptions. Look at your neighbor and say, there's always one. Always one person that has their own opinion about everything. One person is full of consecration. The other person is full of complaints. Yeah, that song wasn't all that. It just, I, I didn't like the way they, you know, the altos needed, they needed more. No, no, so you always got something to say. Always got something to, somebody can always point to what the church is doing good. But there's always somebody that can point to everything that is wrong. Same perfume, different perception. You have to understand that, that it is your disposition that can actually ruin your devotion. That how you perceive everything and always constantly negative and see it, the glasses half full, that disposition is ruining your devotion. And then if you're not careful, that person can try to go and ruin your devotion. Because misery loves company. Amen. And so now, Judas was the treasurer. Knew the price of everything. He knew, whoo, that's some expensive perfume. Knew the price of everything, but knew the worth of nothing. Come on now. He saw that expensive perfume, and he said, I, I just could not believe. I was offended that she poured out the entire bottle. I'm offended by this entire thing. He, he, he said, that's just doing too too much. And how come it's always too much when it's for the Lord? When it comes to the Lord, it's always that's just too much. But when it's come to you, people ain't doing enough. Am I right? Jesus Christ does not show up to your birthday party shushing people. At your anniversary party, at your retirement, when you got a standing ovation, he wasn't telling people to sit down. Come on down. You want people to continue. Encore, encore. Because it's for you. But when it comes to praise and worship of God, that's just doing too much. Nobody goes to your ball game after you just scored a touchdown and telling people to sit down and control yourself. But when it comes to Jesus, 
everybody got an excuse why they can't give them praise. Am I right? Your feet too tired when it comes to Jesus. Am I right? And so Judas said to Mary, he says, you're doing too much. Turn it down. Turn it down. And Mary looked back at him and said, turn down for what? You don't know what God has done for me. <laughs> Got to help the young people to understand. Now, 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 see, Mary's heart really exposes is Judas's heart. Amen. Because your gift always exposes you because your gift is an extension of you. What do you appraise Jesus at? They say appraisals. I know how many people do home appraisals. You do home loans, loans. Those are my loan people, just in case you need a loan. Come on, put your hand in there. I'm trying to get you some free advertisement, okay? If you need to get you a house, one and two. The appraisal is really based on how much somebody's willing to pay for the house, right? And so here's Mary. Mary says, if I appraise Jesus, he's worth it all. Think about it. He bought back to death her brother. He said, I don't know how to repay this man. Most expensive thing I have is this perfect. I'm going to give it to him. I just give it to him. I don't know what else to He's worth it. Every last drop. Judas had been rolling with him for three years. He said, yeah, I'll praise him. And he appraised him for 30 pieces of silver. He said, you know what he's worth to me? The price of a carbon slave. Minimum wage during that day, 25 Gs. There it is, right on your feet. He says fit, about $15. Jesus is worth that. So what is he worth to you? Give me the next slide. Now, the, the, the question is, when it comes to Jesus, do you put Jesus in the bargain basket of your life? Are you seeking a discount devotion? I want devotion, but I want it at a discount. I don't want to pay the entire price. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. don't negotiate the price. Yeah, this ain't, no, this ain't no spiritual swap meet. I ain't trying to get on, you know, this ain't the slots and swap meet. Everything ain't negotiable. You go on the snack shack, pay full price. Am I right? Why are we always trying to put in so little and get back so much? We want him to give us all this salvation, but you know what salvation costed him on the cross? But we want to put in a little sacrifice, and we want a lot out. Mary loved Jesus, but Judas loved money. You love your comfort. You love your pleasure. You love your job. You love your car. Some of you guys are just in love with being in love. We will continue standing. I can lift my hands. I can shout amen. I am free to give the Lord praise.